might have enhanced their chances or spoiled their chances. I'm not sure. Your one, two, three, how do you see it? I think it's a very, very tricky race. Competitive sprint. He would be the horse to beat over 1,200,000. Might be a little bit sharp for him. I'm leaning towards number seven, Tippo Tinto. I think this is going to be the horse to beat. He gets 56 and a half on his back. So for me, number seven, Tippo Tinto. Number three, Merhi. And a little bit of number five, Tete Lester. He's a course and distance specialist, and he rises to the occasion on these big race days. Justin, your view? I like Hopper Paradia. I think of the principal horses in this race. Wild type, a thousand is a question mark. Mohi, a thousand is a question mark. He'll be running on. Copper Parade has found a nice, a nice run of decent form again. He's a real good horse. I think um, he does well at Gravel. I think the thousand is better suited uh, for him than the other two. And then I like a bit of Tipo Tinto as well. He's, he's good over a thousand meters. Well, very amateur, one over 1,200 metres at Clever today, did it well. I'm not 100% certain she's going to take a position in this race, but that you need to, to check. I, I, was, I actually fancied Copper Parade to upset them in the, in the post-merchants, and was, uh, it was lovely to see him run third because he had run a cracker before that in the Golden Horse. Uh, from, a, uh, from a jackpot, second jackpot perspective, because obviously the place accumulator and the pick six by this time is gone, the ninth race being the final leg of those two betting types. But we've got the second jackpot. With Murhi, Copper Parade, and uh, Tipper Tinto, bearing in mind that couplings don't count in the jackpot. With those three horses, uh, Sheldon, would you be happy to get through? I'd throw number five, Tete Lester. I'd go for four horses Didn't he win there. this last year? He won it last year. He always rises to the occasion on the July days, the Gold Cup days. He seems to reserve his best. So he knows when it comes around that time of the year, he seems to flourish. And of course, he does uh, get the two and a half kilograms off his back. So Tete Lester will be carrying 56. As far as the jackpot permutations, this being the second leg of the second jackpot, Justin, uh, would you keep uh, keep it quite tight? Yeah, I think I think relatively tight. You still need four or five more at least. I think you have to put in wild type. Um, I've seen him work a few times the last few weeks. He's doing very very well, and um, he's a quality horse. He's the best horse in the race. Even though a thousand might be too short, he's he'll still be there with a chance. So I'd go one, two, three. I like a bit of Tetelestai as well and Tapotinto. Okay, you're all ignoring Show Me The Way who ran an absolute cracker at, uh, at Clearwood today over, over 1,200, got caught close home. Show Me The Way. He's got so much money on his tail today. I promise you, we had, we had bombs to come today with Show Me The Way. I think most of the country was standing on doubles. The owner was on course. And yeah, he's the type of horse from that draw. He's going to have to absolutely fly up from there. And I think after today's performance, we're going we're gonna to leave him alone on the big race day. Okay, well, there you heard it from the guys. Race 10, Justin seems to be leading towards number two, Copper Parade. We don't have the betting out yet, but I would fancy that Copper Parade will be at quite a big price. And your number one choice, uh, just give us your number one choice again, Sheldon. Tipo Tipo Tinto. Tinto. Right, race 11 is the Etiquini Sprint over 1,200 metres. This is for three-year-olds. We've got Desert Shake running, who won a good race last time. Uh, but I'll kick off with you on this occasion, Justin. Uh, narrow this down for us. Yeah, this isn't a particularly easy race. Um, I like Desert Sheik. He's a good horse. That the run to Snowden stuck out for me. That's when I first noticed that he's really he's become a good horse. I fancied him for the Golden Horse Sprint. And he's I, cracked a draw. Yeah, he's cracked a draw, which is very important. Good run in the Golden Horse Sprint. I think there's still scope for improvement on his hundred merit rating. I think he can end up a little bit better than that. I think Regal Eagle is an interesting horse. He's really improved. I mean, he's just he's reeled off three wins in a row, and he just keeps. He seems to be getting better and better. And if anything, that premium, the race where he beat premium with, there's been two direct winners out of there, so the race could be light. Um, so he could be even higher than his 94. So he's probably the biggest danger for me. Got a horse like Casual Vaz is doing well, but drawn 13. That's that's a it's a hard one to overcome. And Tevez also. He's he's horse without. He's definitely got a chance. Four draw. Bernard's riding. Bass stable in form. It's pretty open. This race is pretty open, but I think between Regal Eagle and Desert Shake, I think the win will come probably from one of those two. Well, Sheldon, Regal Eagle has uh, won four from six. He's won his last three. Uh, he does receive just a little bit of weight from Desert Shake. He's getting four kilograms from him. Desert Shake's won four from eight, the son of Trippy. Uh, where do you see the likely winners coming from? 
I'm in between number one, Desert Shake. I think he's going to be the likely winner. Everything points to him. The cracking run in the golden horse behind Contador. And last time for a brief period, he looked to be going nowhere. And then he really quickened up and he buttoned up. I think the draw and the track's going to suit him down to the ground. So number one, Desert Shake. I think he's going to be the right one. For me, the main danger, number three, Tevez. I don't think we've seen the best of him. I know the stable really hold him in high regard. And I've been a little bit disappointed with his last two runs. But saying that, I think the 1200 at Grable is going to suit him dead right. The speed's going to be on, and he'll be my second choice. Then number two, Gogo Teen. I think he's a horse. If you look at that last run in the post, Merchants, he was only 2.9 lengths behind Merhi. He's taking on, I think, a little bit of a weaker field than they taken on in the previous race. So I think he could also be a trifecta for Tet Inclusion. Okay, well, there you have it for race 11. A desert Shake and Regal Eagle appear to be the leading contenders. Pretty decent three-year-olds. Uh, desert Shake, of course, winner of the Durban Dash, which was sponsored by the VAR Syndicate. I kind of tend to agree with you. I'm not sure that we've seen the best of Tevez this season. And uh, a different Tevez might well turn up at Gravel on Saturday. But let's go to the 12th before we close our show with a, a look at uh, of course the 3.5 million rand Vodacom Durban July now this is a new race completely race 12 is the KZN yearling sale million this is for two-year-olds they're going to be doing it late at night they're going to be doing it under the lights they graduates from last year's KZN yearling sale and again this year's KZN yearling sale graduates and let me remind you again that the sale is at the Sun Coast on uh, Thursday and Friday. They will also be eligible for a million rand race next year. Now, sometimes with these sales races, you can end up uh, with perhaps not such a great field, but I don't think that's the case. I think we've got some really nice horses uh, running, uh, but for many of them, it's uh, a whole new ball game. Justin? Yeah, this race is very difficult. Um, I like a bit of color of courage, decent draw, proven at feature race level. Uh, Virgo's Bay Philly's Nursery winner. I mean, there's some quality horses here. And then you've got to throw into the mix a filly like Agatha Panther. Good second to Happy Valentine. Won a nice, strongish maiden. Um, it's open. Jimmy Choo's a good horse, but does he stay the extra, the extra bit of distance? I don't know, because he's so quick. And then he seems to fade in the last bit. On the nod is a progressive-looking type of horse. And then uh, Hector Vela won nicely first time out, but he's drawn 16 here, which is a problem. Uh, I also like a bit of uh, Tyra and Zach. He's Orthorox. He's a nice, he uh, won very well last time, and I think he's got potential. He was to a very upset. nice yearling. He made quite a price. So in fact, he sold for a lot more than, than Happy Valentine, if my memory serves me correctly. Interesting that uh, the connections of Happy Valentine with a Group 1 victory already under their belt opted to go for another Group 1 at, at the expense of the money because. Uh, Happy Valentine would have uh, qualified for this race as a graduate of last year's sale, and she would surely have blown this lot away. Uh, but yes, Authorize is a very nice, uh, very nice horse. So how do you sum it up? Which uh, which way will we be leaning? It's the final leg of Jackpot Two, and it's uh, a massive quartet race. This because we've got a two hundred thousand rand carryover, so this quartet pool is going to go right through the roof. Uh, we're expecting a pool of anywhere between one and a half and two million rand for this the 12th race what are the key horses for you Justin? if i'd asked you for two key horses as floaters uh what would be the two key horses for you the key horses for me would definitely have to be color of courage and virgo's babe uh, virgo's babe's only got 55 and a half getting that filly allowance and she's a group two winner she won the phillies no she she won it in fine style she had a run last time when she was beaten by winter star so she'll strip fitter and of course, Color uh, of Courage is a, is a winner on the course, which is important. He's got a fairly decent draw. Sheldon, it's a big race, this. It's a, a million rand for the owners and the trainers and the jockeys. As I said, it's going to be a multi-million rand, possibly, quartet pool with the 200,000 carryover coming into it. Uh, the form lines uh, don't necessarily all match up. Um, are you on the same page as, just, as Justin, or do you see it a little differently? No, I'm on the same page. I think Color of Courage, the stable, really holds him in high regard. From day one, I remember when he stepped onto the track, the word was out that he could really gallop. He didn't disgrace his first two runs. He beat Translator, and then he beat Ace Antonius. And I think coming back to the Grable circuit, you'll see him in the ring. He's a lovely specimen, and I think he's going to end up being the horse to beat. 
For me, the dark horse in the race is going to be the Tyron Zaki trained authorized. Tyron Zaki is a very, very shrewd trainer. He steps the horses out, and I think this horse is going to be the type of horse that could win a race of this nature. Barring those runners, Jimmy Chu, if he stays, he'll have some sort of a He'll lead them turning for home. 100% turning for home, Jimmy Chu. They might even try and tuck in, and if they can, but I don't think they'll be able to. He's got that natural gate speed. 1,300. If, if the conditions are on the good side, I think Jimmy Chu could certainly run an absolute cracker. But for me, the dark horse is going to be number three, Authorus. Interesting that last year's KZN yearling sale topper is in the race. Uh, fetched more than a million. Tiger Territory, the son of Trippy. Um, 1.1 million, he was the sale topper. Uh, he's improved vastly from an ordinary debut when finishing well behind Willow Magic. He's improved at every start. Perhaps this race, Justin, just comes a little too soon for him. And he's got that wide draw to overcome. Yeah, terrible draw, but I think the key is uh, on debut in the nursery, he ran towards the back of the field, and as you say, he's improved then, but that was on sand. Two runs on sand, two good runs. Uh, maybe maybe the horse is just better on sand than on the turf. It's hard to tell at the moment, but he's got it all to do from that draw. So the key horse in the race could be Colour of Courage. I have to agree with you. He's one of the most magnificent horses I've seen in a long time. He really does look the part when you see him in the parade ring. He's had a bit of racing experience. He's a stable companion, Active Valor, that won well first time. He's also got a deep draw to contend with, but does have the services of Anthony Del Pesh. So certainly the stable holds a strong hand, but perhaps you don't have to go too wide in race 12. You've heard it from the guys, the key horses. So let's end off the show by going back in our race card to the seventh race on the card, the Vodacom Durban July Grade one, 2,200 meters, three and a half million rand up for grabs. The first prize, uh, two million rand, just a little more than two million rand. Uh, the field headed, of course, by number one, Pomodoro, who is the defending champion for Chris Vanikek. And what a wonderful photograph of Chris Vanikek uh, on the front of the computer form. We've seen that photograph before. It just kind of encapsulates everything that the Vodacom Durban July is about. Now, we're not going to go through each of the horses, of course. Uh, these are going to be analyzed one way or another throughout the week. Uh, there's going to be much debate. There's going to be panel shows all around Durban. The jockeys are going to be interviewed. The, the newspaper guys are going to get a hold of the trainers. We're having the first bite of the cherry from, a, from the perspective of being a panel. But uh, Justin and Sheldon, as I said, there's so much activity around the Vodacom Durban July. There are panel discussions at Royal Durban and at various other centers around the country um, and so on. And uh, I bet David Thistleton will be working very hard behind the scenes to try and get the inside track from all of the trainers. Interesting, before we start, uh, let's just have a quick chat about Anton Marcus because, you know, he'll have been sidelined for just about a month and, and not having ridden. And he comes back, he's got uh, three rides on the day. But he's such a professional, Sheldon, I, I would expect him that the... the, the, the the gap away from the track is not going to affect him in any negative way. That's the key. Being such an ultimate professional, Anton Marcus, he would have s sussed out everything. If he wasn't 100% for the day, he wouldn't be riding. He's obviously taken that little bit of a break, but he'll be keeping fit. He'll be doing other things to keep his, keep his body and everything in 100% ship-shape condition. And come big race day, it's going to be the Anton Marcus that we know. Well, I think the Vodacom Durban July this year has got no fewer than 18 grade one performers in the race, most of which have been achieved in this last uh, season. In fact, all bar one, I think, have achieved their grade one performances, whether they wins or places in the last, in the last 12 months or so. But it's a race where I believe the betting is all wrong, uh, and I genuinely mean this. They're betting four and five to one the field. For me, it's an eight to one the field type of race. Uh, obviously, the weight of money will affect the betting, uh, but Justin, let's kick off with you. Uh, how do you see the race? What are your fancies? Uh, give us a comment about the pace now. You see it panning out, uh, but a tough race, I guess. Yes, it's very tough. Um, I'm not of the opinion that there's going to be no pace, like some people are. I think Seal's going to. It make was them interesting, gallop. if I may interject. It was interesting watching the panel discussion after the gallops on Thursday. There were four panelists. It was Paul Lafferty. It was Matthew Lips. It was Gavin Finsale, and there was Kevin Shea. Three of the panelists seemed to think it was going to be a slow run race, and the other panelists thought, you guys must be on the wrong planet because this is going to be a very fast run race. And, of course, that is, in effect, key as well because if the race is run true and hard and fast, it minimizes the outside draws. 
if they go very slowly, of course, it, it does make it more difficult for the guys to warm. Sorry I interrupted you, but the pace, I wanted to pick up on that pace. So you think it's going to be a fast run July? Yeah, I'm convinced it's going to be fast run. And with 20 horses, there's always early pace in the July, people jostling for positions. And then they normally slow it up. Sometimes they slow it up and then quicken the game. Seal's going to make sure they don't slow it up. He stays all day. He's going to want to make sure his stamina is his strength here. So he's going to make them stay. Then you've got a horse like Wagner as well who likes to go to the front and gallop. He's a galloper. So between the two of them, there's gonna, they're going to go a decent clip. It's going to allow horses to get over.